Okay, you've got your new Splash Drone 3 and you're all excited. Nice looking case, opening it up. And we see the Splash Drone unit and the transmitter controller. If you've got the uh, 4K version, you've got the 4K camera with gimbal here, your power supply and various other bits and pieces. If you've got the Fisherman version, you're going to have the SAR kit or payload release and camera sitting there. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is calibrate the unit. And it's really important that you calibrate this unit every time you take it to a new location or the same location on a different day. There'll be a lot of people tell you, she'll be right mate, I can assure you it won't be. Calibrate it every time and then you know everything's right. So the first thing we'll do is undo the straps here that's uh, holding it all in nicely. And there's a manual and there's a important information. Please read this very carefully. If you're not sure, read it again and read it again and read it again. It's far better to, to read it too many times than not understand what you're doing. So I'm going to pop those away for the moment underneath there. When it comes, the battery in the back of the transmitter will be disconnected and it just connects by the plug in there, which is only goes in one way. So you make sure that's nice and tight. These antennas on the top, it's actually quite important that they face the right way. Most people think they go that way. In fact, they go on the 45 degree angle. This one being 2.4 to control your transmitter and this one 5.8 to control your uh, video. So what we do first and foremost is hold both these power buttons with the indicators there both simultaneously and you'll hear the little beep as the transmitter powers up. Also make sure all the switches are in the, in the upright position. Then we undo the screws here, noting the front of the unit. The front is marked on the top here and these indicators here. It's really important to know where the front is. So we open that up and we see inside we've got a cable here. Don't you know, pull too strenuously on that cable. And note the battery. So the battery is up a particular way with this label facing upwards. So what we're going to do is now we're just going to take this outside into a position to calibrate. You've got to be away from um, buildings, vehicles and uh, mobile phone. If you've got a mobile phone, make sure Wi-Fi is turned off. It's really important when you're flying, calibrating, doing everything, no Wi-Fi. Okay, so we're just going to open this up. And, you know, if you look around, there's no buildings. We're in a nice open park area here today. And the screen is going here. I'm just going to connect the battery. And if you have a look inside here, you'll notice that there's flashing there and you heard it beep. Once that beep is, you hold, you push down the return to home button and hold the controls in that direction like that and you'll notice this flashing rapidly and then it goes to a solid green light. Release that controls, disconnect the power and power off your transmitter and you'll hear it do its little down tone. Okay so that is the accelerometer calibration <clears throat> and it's really important to do the accelerometer ca calibration every time that you're going to calibrate the compass which is every time you go to a new location or the same location on a different day. So if you pop this in your vehicle you've probably got speakers and all sorts of magnetic influence. Once you pop it in a car if you're going to fly it again it needs to be recalibrated. Okay, so the second part of this is we're going to do the compass calibration. So we power the transmitter on again, making sure that all the switches are in the upwards position by holding those buttons in until you hear the upward movement. Now when I'm doing this calibration, make sure that your camera is not connected. If it's connected, it's going to thrash around and you know possibly do some damage. So what I'm going to do there is connect the battery leads, making you know they'll only go together one way. Pop those in there and I'm just going to sit those underneath there out of the way behind the battery. 
I'm then going to, once it beeped, I'm going to put the return to home switch in the down position and I'm going to move the controls over to that way and you'll notice that the light is flashing rapidly there. I let those go. I pop the lid back on, making sure that the arrow is facing the front here. Just pop a couple of screws on to make sure that the lid doesn't fall off. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to calibrate. So I'm going to hold it with my arm straight out. It's really important that you keep this in plane while you rotate it. So that's level, everything's facing right. I'm going to rotate it around the axis, 360 degrees to there. Then I'm going to invert it upside down and do the same thing, holding it level all the way through. flat surface here. I'm going to undo those screws and we're going to look inside here and look at the light and notice now that the light is just flashing uh, green. It may flash red for you if you haven't got full GPS signal but you know it's stopped that rapid flashing and that's now calibrated. <clears throat> just notice how that had popped out so it's really important so that these leads don't get in the way of this GPS so when you're flying it give it a good tuck in behind there and make sure that battery is nicely secured in there so it can't float around so once we're happy with that we then get the battery back out of here and my big fat fingers don't make it that easy but there we are we disconnect the battery and we power down the transmitter so at this point in time you can pop your legs on, you can mount your camera or your <clears throat> payload release, your SAR kit, very very simple, there's a hole in the bottom here and <clears throat> on your gimbal you've got a threaded screw here which just undoes and facing the camera to the front that just pops on there and the screw does up in there. I'm not going to do that all the way up. And <clears throat> this connector lines up and you'll notice that there's a little slot in the plug and there's a matching one inside here. Usually they're marked with a little bit of orange. This one doesn't seem to be, but you'll notice right about there there's a so that that plug will only go on one way. When you're putting this on, <clears throat> clearly you'd need to put the legs on first so this camera doesn't get damaged. Uh, but for this exercise, we actually don't need to have it attached. And again, just disconnects the same way. <clears throat> so this would now be ready to fly and you place it on the ground. Pretending this is the ground, you can uh, put your props on and they just push on and turn making sure they're tight and then when you're ready <coughs> you'd have the top off turn the transmitter back on and it was beeping like that because the switch was in the downward position so anytime there's an unusual beeping that's a warning <coughs> so once everything's going there we then hook that back up, tuck that down <clears throat> and now we need to wait to make sure before it is ready to fly have to make sure that we've got suitable number of satellites. Now this can vary <clears throat> depending on where you are at the time of day so you can have 15 satellites one minute and 10 the next so you've got to make sure that you've got a reasonably constant amount of satellites before you fly. Now on there we're seeing at the moment there's 11 satellites so that's going to be enough to engage uh, the motors. So to uh, engage the motors holding both sticks to the inside and that arms them 
and holding them both to the outside will disarm the motors. So in GPS mode, if there's not enough satellites, the motors won't arm. If you decide you want to fly it in full manual mode, which is ATI mode, you can flick the switch all the way down to the bottom and those motors will arm whether or not there's GPS. So, you know, just make sure that you've got that switch in the right way.